Welcome back to Too Much Future, the show where we play through Fallout and talk about it. I'm Cameron. <laughs> what, Michael? Uh, You're what? Michael. Oh, oh, oh. Mm, sorry, sorry. Teleprompter, teleprompter, teleprompter threw me off. <laughs> I'm Michael. Oh, and I'm Cameron. And today we're going to talk about Vault 15. Mm -hmm. You've seen Michael doing his now classic Barack Obama impression. <laughs> is, is, is that yes. is that is that an old? The people that well, people in 2019 know that Barack Obama often used a teleprompter <laughs> and was criticized for it in the 2008 general election. <laughs> only, only uh, early 2000s kids remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that what Barack Obama was lightly criticized for. Yes. How do you how do you ever make it? You know, uh, that's yeah. our other podcast. How it's, how do you do it? How do you how do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Where we just read through the audacity of hope page by page. <laughs> oh gosh! But this is about Fallout. This is not yeah. about Barack Obama. This is, this is unfortunately about Fallout. Yes. <laughs> um. I like that now you have FOMO about the uh, yeah about the Barack Obama podcast. <laughs> right now, now I'm just like, why, why didn't we do the Barack Obama podcast? Mm. That would fit right in with the Range Touch brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of. But of course, we live under the Stein regime, and we would not want it any other way. Mm -hmm. Barack Praise Obama me. is, of course, living in Sweden now, uh, safe mm -hmm. from the clutches of the government. Yes. <sighs> well. You know what is not safe from the clutches of government because there's oh, wow. no government. What, what is that? It's Vault Fifteen. <laughs> it's Vault Fifteen. Can we talk? I've written this at the top of top of my notes two times. Uh -huh. I feel like we glossed oh. over it last time. I want to okay. talk about it. Okay. This world map and this music. In okay. This, in Fallout One. All right. Let's they talk good. about it. They are good. St uh, thesis they are good <laughs> <laughs> all right i am not uh inclined to argue against you at this point um but unpack elaborate why do you mm -hmm. think they are good well so the the world map right we talked about it a little a little bit last time but you could just go hog wild at this it's point. a really weird world map like you can you can get into the world map and you could go anywhere in the world that you mm -hmm. wanted to go i think that is cool Right, and it solves, like, to sort of, in, in case anyone who's listening hasn't played this game, um, it's not like a Bethesda-style open world where, uh, you know, you start the game and you're kind of embedded in the world and you can, you know, run willy-nilly everywhere, like, f like physically, like, run to wherever you're going. Um, the world map for this game exists on a very weird layer of ex um, abstraction where i think it's supposed to be kind of like the map as it is seen on like your pip boy screen or something mm -hmm. yeah I think um so. and you sort of see the map as a large grid um and you point like you click on places on the map that you want to go and then you watch like your little uh red cursor travel to that point so that's how you move from like specific like place map to place map you don't have a full continuous world um and on, on during your travels you can have like i think they're random encounters essentially uh where you might fight uh, uh, uh some monsters or something um but yeah no you can like start this game and just like click on the opposite side of the map and then watch yourself go yeah and there and it's all timed too right because remember yes. we have like what 200 days or something like that to get yes. the water chip and you see that that uh little countdown timer in the top left just tick 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 tick, tick just going mm -hmm. the whole time um I, yeah i like it it's like a topographical map i guess it's like um it's kind of weird because you would assume that they wouldn't have satellite imagery of the current time yeah that's true yeah and yet, hmm. and yet it does appear to so a little, a little confusing but um but yeah i like it and then there's all this music playing behind it which is good i think this yeah. is like by far by a billion percent the best video game soundtrack of its era it has really good sound design. It it is great. The guy who did it, I can't remember his name. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up while we're talking. But he used to have it um, on his website for free. 
Oh. Mark Morgan is his name. Okay. And the album is called Vault Archives. And the soundtrack for um, both one and two are used to be available in, in the public domain. They are still available in the public domain. You can Uh-oh. get them on archive.org. Neat. I'll put the Thanks. link in the description. Thank you, archive.org. Thank you, yeah. Mark Morgan. And I'll send this to you, too. Hooray! It's good to listen to, but it's all these, like, you know, video games, um, for whatever reason, have rarely been into, like, ambient music. Like, truly ambulant, or ambient, ambulant. Yeah. <laughs> Walking music. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, have rarely been into, like, just, like, soundscape 90s ass music right there's a lot of like thumping drums i i've been doing a lot of stuff for sword coast coast to coast recently where i've been going to um websites where you license music for movies mm-hmm. so i can find like backing tracks for, for that without doing like traditional fantasy stuff yeah and a lot of that i would say like 90 percent of the like licensable video game and movie soundtrack stuff that's all like thumping drums and, and <laughs> like dum 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 which is cool or whatever right mortal combat i kind of uh <laughs> you know just maybe maybe a little bit more bass in it yeah. but but yeah this is a nice change of pace i think because it's like you know you're just walking around and it'll be like wisping <laughs> desert wind yeah and that's the song and there'll be like some like guitar Mm-hmm. Bed, embedded deep in it where it's like Brown. no it is it actually it is very very good sound it's good for that sense of place mm-hmm. well you should listen to these soundtracks they're very good they were in heavy rotation for me for a number of years you want to talk about vault 15 uh yeah let's talk about the big disappointment that is vault 15 <laughs> so well, you already... went there first yes i went there way back in the first episode um because i had no idea what i was doing and i Killed a bunch of rats, including a big old mole rat, and then I wandered back into the vault until I got to a point where I could not go back any further because it turned out I needed a rope. Um, so this time I came back with with a rope and with another rope because you had tipped me off that I was going to need another rope. Yeah, sorry and, about that. Oh, that's all right. Uh, it, it saved me a lot of hassle. Uh, <laughs> but then... Um, Surprise, the next two floors of the vault are basically just like the first floor of the vault. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, like chock it, full of rats. Chock full of rats. Uh, like a bunch of a bunch of pig rats, which haven't shown up in, in the more recent uh, Bethesda era Fallout games, which is interesting. I wonder where all the pig rats went. Um, yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's right. Obsidian, where are the pig rats? All right. Bethesda. Um. And yeah, uh, like in in a word, um, this vault was boring. <laughs> like, correct me if I am wrong, Cameron, but there is like nothing in here except for some rats to kill and some goodies to pick up. Is that correct? Like that I, is it? I went and did a little bit of digging because I I thought I got to the bottom of this thing and I thought there's no way. This is the only thing down here because, in fact, you can you get down to the bottom and like you go into a little room and it says, "Oh, there's no water chip here, folks." You know, yeah, like there's down like your little screen, your little uh, I don't know text log. I don't know. What yeah, that's yeah. There's like this weird little text log in the corner of the game that like where it's when you like look at things and you get descriptions. It's where they show up and it just like it's like the voice of God in your head, I guess. <laughs> um, it's the thing that lets you like look at someone through three walls on the other side of the town and know that they're a peasant. Um, <laughs> and you just like go into the you like walk into the corner of like the lowest floor of the of Vault 15 and it's just like there's no water chip here. Yeah, yes, you you absolute foolish vault dweller child. <laughs> uh, yeah, but but here's the thing. If you don't know to look for that, that that definitely appeared and then was immediately buried by 400 entries of you scrolling around looking at things. And so right. I actually had to like, I wandered around a bit and I had to like scroll up in my little feed um, to go back and check that message. And you get like some experience points for finding nothing. It's the ultimate yeah. experience. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess, and uh, but so so I thought, oh, there has to be something here. Same, 
has to be. So I did a little Googling. Mm-hmm. And some people claim that you can find a location that tells you where the mole rats are coming from. And it gives you more experience. I didn't find that location. What do you mean a location? Like a little, you can you can maneuver around the screen on the third uh, uh, third level of the vault, basement three of the vault. Mm-hmm. And you can maneuver around the screen if you get close enough to the position from which the rats are emerging. You, you'll get another little entry that says, hey, this is where the rats are coming from. I didn't get that. So. Neither did I. And it was really disappointing because I thought, here was my logic. You, there is a uh, dynamite, there's a time bomb in the bottom of this thing. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. So that was there, and I thought, oh, I'll be able to blow something up. Oh, and that. go into a different room. Yes. Mm-hmm. But you can't. That's not true. No, that would have made a lot of sense. But I think, I think you can go back, because the Rad Scorpion tunnel, if you remember that, from mm-hmm. all the way back. I think you can close off the Rad Sco- Scorpion Tunnel, so I'm going to try to take my time bomb and go back to the Rad Scorpion Tunnel and then blow with that up. Oh, okay. I didn't think about that till this very moment. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, because now I just have this dynamite and I don't know what to do with it. Um, oh, I tried to use it several different times during this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't work out any of the times. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I've just got some dynamite now, I guess. Well, um, so, so did you try to use it at all? No, like this oh. was like, I are amazing. Oh, okay. I like dynamite does not exactly uh, uh, suit my my current play style, or at least what mm-hmm. I think I can do with the dynamite. Um, I'm just more content to like sneak around in my. Uh, oh yeah, no, we got armor. Like the first, I think the first armor, not necessarily in the game. Maybe you could have bartered it before this, but like I got, you know, Eleanor got a, a cool leather jacket. That's oh, like yeah. missing a, missing an arm or something. Yeah, it's the Mad Max jacket. Yeah, from from uh, the Road Warrior. Um, yeah, that's in here. And then there's also a spare rope. That's what I was apologizing mm-hmm. for about that rope earlier. Oh yeah, I was like, well now now I have another rope. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no. But, so Vault 15 was interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, so sort of. Just to say, we got uh, the dynamite, and we also got two grenades. These are oh, all going yes, to be very grenades. important for me. Later in this episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I already know how this is going to go. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, Vault 15 was very interesting, um, even though I said it was, like, boring. Like, it is interesting from a design perspective precisely because of what we said earlier, where there's, like, there's really nothing here other than some stuff that we picked up and uh, a bunch of rats to kill. And there's not even, if you're familiar with, again, like, the the sort of, uh, the more contemporary, like, Bethesda, post-Bethesda Fallout games, you would expect uh, at this point that you could go through a bunch of the uh, computers in, in the vault, right? A bunch of the archives or something and find out what happened here. There would be a bunch of, you know, logs and backstory for how the vault fell to pieces. There's none of that. Like, none of the computers are workable. Um, and... The vault is just empty, except for some rats and some uh, stuff you pick up, and that's it. <laughs> yep. Um, I mean, you know, I think I said this last episode, too, but there's there's a certain type of design style that I find interesting here that is, like, purely Gygaxian mm-hmm. in the sense of, like, yeah, the vault's abandoned. It's empty. It's been looted. Rats live there now. Mm-hmm. You need to fight rats and pig rats and mole rats and greater mole rats because <laughs> that's who live here now and so i could appreciate it on that level to yeah. some degree but um but it, i guess what's also cool about it too is like you i think you mentioned this last episode where we know already what happened to vault 15 yeah that right, is we, true right like we, that's the that is the thing is that we have been told what happened with vault 15 yeah like it's abandoned it's empty the people who live there now live in Shady Sands. Some of them are raiders. Like, you know, I, I guess it depends on how much information you have, but it's not like there are a billion people to talk to. But, it, right. you know, so getting there, I was like, oh, yeah, it's, I guess it's, it's abandoned, I guess. Right. Cool. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's uh, strangely undramatic for the way that the vaults are going to evolve later in the series. Because it was just like, 
the vault turned out to be unsustainable. So we left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that is the thing. Is like the vaults eventually in these games, and and this is even happening to some degree in Fallout Two. I think like the the pieces are there, but um, eventually, eventually they become like. A way for Bethesda's designers to tell one-off stories that are not related to the main plot. Mm -hmm. Like, fully self-contained side quests, I guess. Right. And that is not how they are now. Like, they are right. part part and parcel of the main quest, and they are boring because much of this world is, in fact, boring. Because it is mm -hmm. simulating a wasteland. Right. Um, yeah, so then we, we leave Vault 15, uh, and... Did you go straight back to Shady Sands? I went straight back to... Sh straight back... Oh, that's a hard one. Straight back to Shady Sands. Uh, this I is did... a new Wind Spirit Heels <laughs> for me. Ooh, straight back to Shady Sands. Uh, I did too, and then the game crashed. Um, yeah. And I had forgotten to save uh, on the last level, so I got to do that again. But... Uh, thank God the, uh, the high res patch or, or whatever that you had mm -hmm. mentioned, I think in the first episode. So I hadn't, I have that now. I hadn't realized that there were a bunch of options for that patch that sort of like came embedded with it, like hidden in one of the menus. Mm -hmm. One of which allows you to make it so your character is just running constantly. <laughs> Uh, and like, it also, you can choose to speed up combat. Uh, and I was like, oh, holy hell. Because let me tell you, this game is slow as molasses. Um, <laughs> if Wait, have you... you been walking everywhere this whole time? Yes. I mean, more or less. Oh my God, Michael. <laughs> yes, it is so slow. <laughs> so now I am like, so I was like, yes, now I can like permanently run and combat can go places. Fantastic. So I, uh redid the last level of vault 15 and then i walked back and then i saved then i walked back to shady sands and this time i met a traveling merchant um yeah. named uh i'm not sure how to pronounce his name it's it's possibly duke maybe duck but i would say maybe duke and that's that's i don't know he, he was a person with a name and he had some stuff to sell me <laughs> yeah i met him too i think he says something to the effect he's talking about um what do you call it, right? Uh, the hub, I mm -hmm. think. He has yeah. like a little bit of information. I don't know if it's this one. I think that it is Fallout 2 that begins this. There are traders that are on set routes, and if you're in the same square as them, you will encounter them. Oh. I know some of that is happening in one of these. I It might be in this one. But there's like weird behind-the-scenes stuff that's much more complicated than you would think in this mm -hmm. game. Um for that, as like simply as it presents itself. Um, so uh, when when you uh, what happened when you got back to uh, Shady Sands? Uh, I got back to Shady Sands and um, I talked to Seth, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, who? Yeah, I talked to Seth, who said something about he, he. So Tandy has been kidnapped, or she's missing, or something. I can't remember if he said that she's been kidnapped or if she was just missing. Um, well, he says he says my girl, uh, Tandy. Yeah. Is right missing. like suddenly suddenly we get character right suddenly the writing for these for these uh npcs has some like little bit of character i was also super confused by that because he does say my girl uh tandy and for whatever reason like i didn't parse that as like sort of the weird 1950s ish kind of slang of like my girl you know i thought he was referring to tandy as his daughter <laughs> and I knew that Tandy was Aridesh's daughter. Mm. And then I was like, oh my god, are Seth and Aridesh? <laughs> like, just this completely absurd moment where I was like, are, are Seth and Aridesh a couple? And like, they're raising Tandy? And I was like, that's really ahead of its time for 1997. Oh, no, probably he's just saying she's his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or he was singing the uh, classic My Girl. Mm-hmm. Right, because that would have been a huge hit prior to everyone going down into the vaults. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but yeah. So, so I, I talked to Aradesh first, and he, using his claymation face, is just mm -hmm. like, "Rescue my daughter." <laughs> Here's he a spear, <laughs> and and he doesn't 
exactly know where his daughter is. Am I remembering that correctly? Like, his dialogue is kind of weird on this point, where it's kind of like, I don't know, like, Candy's missing. And you're kind of like, oh, like, <laughs> I don't know if your dialogue is the same, because I know your your character Tonk has um, l- much lower intelligence than than Eleanor. Uh, but when Eridesh said, like, my, he says, like, my daughter is missing, and my first and only possible response was, have you tried looking for her? <laughs> 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 no and, i don't i don't think that that was tonk's response i think tonk was like oh no <laughs> that sounds yeah. bad it was just it was so weird like uh so one of the other things that i've noticed about this game is that when dialogue options change based on a character's stat it is not marked so you don't necessarily know if something is available to you because it's like just a basic interaction or because it's like a special interaction um, based on your on your skills or on your particular build. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Aridesh was like, my daughter Tandy is missing. And I was just this huge asshole and was like, well, have you tried looking for her? Well, you better um, go catch her. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he's like, I'm not sure where she is, but I maybe it's the Raiders who live southeast of here. Here's a spear. Yeah, they left the spear, and I thought, I was like, oh, dang, I'll be able to use the spear to be like, hey, I know it was you, you know, Sherlock Holmes and them out here and getting them to have some guilt. Tonk was not uh, that smart. So <laughs> I imagine the difference between Eleanor and Tonk here is, uh, you know, a wide gulf. So, so Michael, I'd like you to just narrate the entirety of what happened for okay. you rescuing Tandy, and then I'll give you the uh, extremely long 45-minute <laughs> experience that i had trying every maneuver possible to rescue tandy okay um so uh i still have ian tagging along with me Mm -hmm. uh, but i have done something i have pickpocketed ian i have taken his gun from him i have given him a spear (laughs) ian bless his heart now goes into hostile areas before me and gets his ass kicked while I pick things off with my gun. Um, so this is my this is my sort of strategy, my combat strategy now. He has a lot of hit points. Yeah, <laughs> that's just what I. That's, that's how I do it. Um, so I went to the raider camp um, with Ian in tow, and uh, did not put away my weapon fast enough, and everyone went hostile on me, and everything went badly very quickly. So I restarted. <laughs> put away my weapon before I walked into the raider camp. Um, There was a guard and I was talking with the, like there's just this guard out front and I could talk with them. And uh, I had a couple of dialogue options. One was uh, just like, you know, I'm like, they're like, basically they're they're What are you, what are you doing here? Is, is kind of their orientation towards you. Mm -hmm. And you can say like, I'm just passing through essentially. Like I'm on my way somewhere else or like, you know, I'm just, I'm just here and I came through and they'll just be like, okay. (laughs) Like that's their response. Um, You can also ask them about Tandy, but they won't admit to having Tandy around, Um, but they will be interested in why you're looking for her. And you can say like, uh, there's like a price on her head or something and I'm looking to collect. And uh, I don't, their response to me in this case, at least was, uh, I don't believe you. (laughs) Like, I don't believe you, and even if I did, I would probably want that money for myself. Um, so no one was particularly helpful. Uh, I eventually wandered into the, like, central... So the Raider camp is, like, a bunch of little uh, tents, and there's, like, a central shack and then some tents. Mm -hmm. Um, I went into the central shack, um, talked to some more Raiders, none of whom were helpful, and then I met their leader, whose name is Garl. And he uh, was a huge jerk, and I had a couple of options for talking with him. Um, and he, he admitted, essentially, to having Tandy locked up in, in a back room. Oh, also, there were slaves in this room. Uh, yeah. Women who are, and I quote, bru- bruised and battered. Um, so yeah. some, some darkness here. Uh, yeah, there's great. a lot of this game has just like some of it, but Fallout Two, I would say, is like almost a game about slavery, um, mm. in the sense that like slavers and and the potential of joining up with slavers or getting rid of slavers is that's like a big you know side quest plot line to do in, in Fallout Two, and then um, mm-hmm. 
in like every city in Fallout 2 has some sort of relationship, either positive or negative, to the slavers. And then Sulik, who is uh, a character we're going to have a lot to talk about when we get there. Um, <laughs> but his whole plot is that his sister has been kidnapped and sold into slavery. Um, and sadly enough, I'm just going to spoil it here. Uh, Sulik's quest does not have an ending to it. They did not finish it in Fallout 2. And so it's Ugh. even sadder. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, so, so this is just the beginning of like slave stuff that populates mm-hmm. Fallout that really kind of drops out once it gets, becomes a Bethesda property. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so there was that. And so I had a couple of options for dealing, um, with Garl. Uh, I could try bartering with him for Tandy. Uh, I could have challenged him to single combat. It seems like, uh, the option that I ended up going with because it was so bizarre, uh, and I have no idea, I think this was probably based on one of my stats, but again, these aren't marked, and I have no idea, like, what stat it was that gave me this option. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, he was like, you know, wh- why should I Why should I give you this woman that I've kidnapped? Uh, and my response, my potential response was something like, uh, because it would be good for your soul? Whoa. Yeah. This is just a very strange response, and I was like, yeah, sure, let's go with that. Um, This also touches on something that I wanted to mention uh, that I noticed this episode, which is another thing that drops out in in the Bethesda games, uh, is the religion that is operating in in the Wasteland here. Um, It is not particularly fleshed out at this point, but it was strange to me that I suddenly had this option to talk about uh, Garl's soul, And I believe when I had been back in Shady Sands, um, one of the NPCs had mentioned the Dharma, Mm -hmm. um, which is which is the religion of the wasteland, essentially. Um, And Dharma is, is of course, is a a term that gets drawn out of both Hinduism and Buddhism. And in the Fallout Wasteland, at least in this game, it appears so it is. It is left up to speculation precisely how uh, a bunch of people who lived in in some boxes underground during a nuclear war all came out and then uh, sort of adopted a weird, uh, like, syncretic, uh, I don't know if I just said that word correctly, but anyway, like this (laughs) weird uh, adopted version of, of Hinduism and or Buddhism that they would just call Dharma, but we see, we see evidence of this in, like, um, the fact that the cattle, the, the mutated cattle that have two heads are called Brahmin, right? Mm-hmm. There's, and I think this is, uh, this is interesting to me because I think this is part of that, part of the game coming from the East Coast and being set on the East Coast. Mm, there's, coast. there's a, right, or not the East Coast, the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Uh, my God. But there's a plausibility, <laughs> right, to, to this idea that like, oh, the, the, the West Coast gets hit, gets hit with nuclear fire. And then in the ruins, um, we all become weird new agey types. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that totally like that, this whole sort of suggestion that there is in fact a religion, like building itself up in, in the wasteland, um, is just gone, I think in, in the Bethesda games. So anyway, yeah, I by told the time Gar- we get to just oh. to, by the time we yeah. get to the Bethesda games, like religion can only be conceived of in terms of cults, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there, there can't be, uh, the, there is no where it is like you would logically assume that outside uh, that that coming out of like a horrific traumatic encounter that many people would turn to like many different types of religion, right, to make sense mm-hmm. of, of the world. That just makes logical sense. Um, yeah, they like. The Bethesda games can only imagine that that would be, like, destructive and violent and cultish and mm-hmm. all fake, right? Quote, unquote. Right. No, and I think, I mean, just the, the vision of, of kind of, like, core human nature that you mm-hmm. get, uh, or rather the different versions of, of what is a core human nature that you get between um, this game and those later games is very interesting to me, right? This idea that uh, individuals are sort of ultimately secular and they're only going to adopt um, religious sort of framings of things if they're crazy or, uh, like, dangerous in some mm-hmm. way, right? If they're being cynical about it. Um so anyway, <laughs> uh, speaking of, of religion and, and whether or not it gets you anything in the post-apocalypse, it didn't get me anything. Garl got, like, <laughs> immediately pissed off when I suggested <laughs> that he could do something good, and everyone aggroed me. Um, 
And then I died. <laughs> mm -hmm. That'll do it. Yep. So, on my next time, um, I decided to finally lean into being uh, the, the, the sneaky bastard, as I'm supposed to be. And uh, I came into the camp, and instead of going in through the front, I went in around the back of the main. I, like, sort of walked all the way around so uh, none of the, the raiders would, like, catch me. I, like, stayed very close to the perimeter. Um, I came in through the back. There are two unnamed guards there. Uh, I fought them and killed them. Um, and then I uh, snuck in through the back, and I found Tandy's little uh, cell, and I picked the lock there, and I got Tandy out. And by this point, I had, like, somehow, somehow, like, by this point, people knew that I was there, and, like, everyone had aggroed me again. Mm -hmm. Um and then I just, like, ran like hell, right? Like, I protected Tandy because I was like, oh, she's absolutely going to be able to die. Um, but I just, like, got me and Ian around her and, like, uh, shepherded her out through the back uh, while everyone else was trying to use up their move points to get around to the back of the building. And that was how we escaped. Dang. Powerful. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, in the process, right, I killed, like, I think a couple of other raiders, and they had names. And mm. maybe I would have been able to, like, get some interesting... So, uh, uh, sort of complementary to um, the the vault that I talked about, where there was, like, so little content there. At least for what I could find out, uh, there might have been content in, in this raider camp where, like, you know, I learned more about these people and who they were because there were named NPCs there. Uh, but... I did not because I, there was there there was seemingly no way for me to step into this space without eventually all of them trying to kill me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, but so then I got back to Shady Sands, um, and Tandy just like split off like and walked back to her spot, um, and Aridesh was like, "Oh, thank you so much. Here is some experience, and I think he gave me some stim packs." Damn it. And then that was basically I, it. I wish I had those stim packs. <laughs> the uh, okay, well, not so uh, not so simple for Tonk. Mm -hmm. It it didn't go. I mean, it, that sounded complicated what you just gave, but uh, I promise you, Tonk had a worse time of it. So similar scenario, you know, I'm, I go in and I'm like figuring out the space, right? Same as you were doing, talking to people, doing that kind of stuff. I met a guy named Petrox. You didn't you didn't talk to Petrox at all? Um, I did not talk to Petrox. I talked to someone named Diana. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I did not talk to Diana. Um yeah. Petrox says he he's like the I I don't like the raider expository character. And oh. so you can be like, "Hey Petrox, what's being a raider like?" <laughs> <laughs> And he literally says, I wrote the quote down because it is very funny to me. He says, as a raider, I get to travel to many parts of the wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> and the health care is great. Yeah, it's like he's making a pitch. It's like you're at a job fair. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, uh, it's a grueling schedule, but we get two weeks off. <laughs> per six weeks of work um or whatever right <laughs> so he, he and but you can talk even tonk could talk to him and after he says that you can get a little bit of information about like junk town i think he says like that the hub has lots of nice ladies in it hmm. which probably to me uh means that there's like slavery there yeah um, sadly but um we'll find out all about that later mm -hmm. um i you know I, I had a similar thing i went in and i talked to garl and got aggroed, and so, like, immediately reloaded, because, once again, Tonk does not even have a gun. He has <laughs> a hammer at this point. <laughs> Just a giant two-handed hammer where, from which he smashes people and does, like, 15 points of damage. <laughs> like it does a lot every rat that i fought in vault 15 was just like one smash and i hit them hard enough that they will they will fall down and then slide along the ground oh yeah 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 no that that's the thing that got uh carried through to the bethesda games is that you can basically have like kills you can there's a setting in the menu where you can be like kills spectacularly gory right like ludicrously gory Oh no, but this is even better. This like yes, uh like uh bloody disgusting and that kind of thing. Yeah. thing. Um no, this is just like a combat movement effect. They're not dead. Oh. 
they like fall down and they slide along the ground and then on their turn they stand back up so it's like a way of getting melee enemies away from you basically oh wow Um, i don't know what triggers it you know it only happens some percentage of the time but um but yeah it's rad um yeah but yep that just reminded me i should say i did get a level up also um at one point during all of this and i got a perk uh that I don't know if it's done anything for me. Um, I could have gotten a really useful perk that would have let me, like, for instance, carry more stuff. But I was like, mm-hmm. no, I'm going to do what Eleanor wants. And what Eleanor wants is awareness, which supposedly is going to be, like, I'm going to be able to see more when I look at things. So, well, I'll mm. we'll see how that goes. Oh, yeah, because it actually gives you, like, instead of being, like... Um... Because to determine something's, like, hit points remaining, you can click on them and it'll say, like, they're, you know, they're injured or they mm-hmm. look badly injured. I think awareness allows you to know exactly their hit point total. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we will, good. we will see how that goes. Yeah, I took the 5% more experience points. Mm. I think Chonk needs to level up a lot. He needs a lot more <laughs> hit points. <laughs> yeah. So I just went for the raw benefit. And I and my melee weapons um, skill is now up to like 108%. <laughs> so he's very good. Uh, just and in case you didn't know that, very important to know, you can level skills up beyond 100%. Mm-hmm. I think they there's like no additional statistical increase after like 140 or something like that. There is a, like a soft cap. Um, for it but anyway so Tonk goes in runs around does all this stuff kind of talks to people finds Tandy in that back room and starts using his big boy brain to figure <laughs> out how how could I get her out right so first thing goes up and tries to just aggro Garl and smash him Garl is wearing metal armor mm-hmm. metal armor whips ass <laughs> like, it does it is very strong and so very quickly i realized this dude's got like 150 hit points and a very high armor value i'm probably not going to be able to smash him by myself so i was like all right i'll try to be sneaky and i'll go in the back door and i'll do the thing that you you did as soon as you open the door for tandy's cell everyone aggros you yes <laughs> and so you know, maybe maybe Eleanor has the ability to, like, move a couple spaces and then shoot and protect, you know, kind of running gun a little bit. Tonk doesn't have that ability because he can only <laughs> hit things in melee range. And, yeah. <laughs> and hitting things with a melee weapon takes up a lot of action points. It's like four. Wow. <laughs> yes. And so uh, this is very difficult for me. Um, basically, anything that I do... They open up the little door from Garl's room into the into the hallway where Tandy is emerging into, and they just start attacking Tandy. So I thought, <laughs> all right, I put my- Ian in there. <laughs> See, I, 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 I like so- pushed him into that <laughs> into that space so he would be a blocker between me and Tandy. I did not have Ian at this point. I get Ian eventually because <laughs> this becomes important. Okay, so it's like. So basically what happens is I was like, all right, I'll do it. And then I'll just, I'll open the door and I'll make my way out the back door, killing the enemies in my way. And then me and Chandy will escape. I start working on the first enemy in that hallway. Who's like the other end of the hallway from Tandy's room. The door from Garl's room opens and people start streaming in. (laughs) It's like five different people coming in here. Tandy comes out of her cell and draws a knife and just yes. starts stabbing Garl Death Hand and uh, hits Anti. him for like 10 and 10 and then knocks him down. And the <laughs> next round permanently, uh, this game uses the, the language of crippled, which I don't, yeah. you know, I don't particularly care for, uh, but just letting people know that's the language, but uh, permanently disables his left arm. <laughs> <laughs> so she does like critical damage to that limb um so she's like holding her own um in melee range once you get enemies down to some percentage of hit points they start running away mm-hmm. which is which is very cool all of them are running away tandy has not been hit one time and i think oh what i'll do is I'll just throw a grenade into these, like, six enemies crowded in the end of this hallway. Sure, Tandy is standing in that group, but she <laughs> hasn't been hit at all, so she'll be okay. She'll have, you know, she'll be at, like, half health. Yeah. But she she'll won't withstand. die. 
She'll, she'll withstand it, right? Yeah. It turns out that Tandy is extremely vulnerable to grenades. <laughs> <laughs> so I throw a grenade in the thing and it blows everyone up, including Tandy, and I have to start over. Actually, well, actually, I take that back. I was like, all right, well, I guess I just failed that mission. I guess I'll just live with those consequences. And I go back to Shady Sands and everyone is hostile. They know in their heart. That <laughs> you've blown up Tanty. Mm -hmm. This is the police coming to get me. Yeah. For it's like, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you blow up Tanty? And so I was like, all right, I guess I'll reload. I really lo reload the game. I do a very similar operation. And I was like, okay, I'll stand and fight. Because Tandy did so well that last combat. And I did so well. We'll actually be able to fight Garl. Mm -hmm. And so I open up the door that, that is into Garl's chamber. And I aggressively throw the grenade in there. Because I figure, hey, I'm going to kill two or three of these enemies all in one go. I uh, misthrow that grenade, and it lands at my feet, and it blows up me and Tandy <laughs> <laughs> at one time. Somewhere in here, I also tried the operation of just going and standing up beside Garl, and then dropping the uh, activating the uh, time bomb, and then dropping it at his feet and running away. Because <laughs> I thought that would work. But that, in fact, as soon as you drop it, that triggers combat. And uh, he got out of the way of the of the thing, which was Aww. disappointing. Yeah. Um, so I go back to Shady Sands. I get Ian. I don't have enough caps for Ian. So I hit the barter button. I trade him, like, some mutant fruit or whatever for <laughs> oh, his yes, own money. <laughs> and then I use his own money to buy him <laughs> or to, 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 you know, to, buy, to hire him. In order to do this. So uh, this game is already great systemically. <laughs> right, right, like I can only imagine being like, I don't want to do it. And being like, oh gosh, but I want this moot fruit. <laughs> it's just like walking up to someone like, would you like to travel with me through the wasteland? Well, you'll have to make it worth my while. And there's like, would you like to buy this fruit from me? Sure thing. I love fruit. And then like suddenly the person you're talking to has enough money to hire you. <laughs> yes. And you're like, oh no, what a, what a terrible position I put myself in. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I get him and we go back. I go back with Ian and I try it a couple more times and I just can't make it work. Um, I we, we go in and we're fighting our way out and like Tandy just cannot stop fighting Garl. She is angry. She is. And I get it. She's not wrong to be angry. She got kidnapped and was going to be sold into slavery. So she has a right to be angry, but I needed her to not stop and use all of her action points on stabbing <laughs> this person with like 200 hit points. This is not the time, Tandy. Yeah, this is not. We'll come back. I promise you. Um, so Tandy, Tandy just got killed. She got stabbed and, and shot and exploded every time I, I tried to do it. Some of that was my fault, some of it wasn't. And so I just left. <laughs> and I went back. But here's the kicker. So in my saving and reloading, the last time I go back to Shady Sands to pick up Ian, I forgot to talk to Aradesh or Seth. Which meant that when I went to the cons, Tandy was kidnapped, but no one had given me a quest to go and get Tandy. Oh. So Tandy dies, I go back to Shady Sands, and I'm, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. You know, I wonder if they're going to mm -hmm. be mad at me, or, you know, will people be hostile? No one's hostile. I talk to Seth, he doesn't say anything about it. I talk to Aradash, and he's like, thank you for cleaning up those rad scorpions. We really appreciate it. So basically, this is like a Schrodinger's Tandy situation, <laughs> in which because she was never kidnapped to begin with... She never died. Well, well, she she was kidnapped, but her kidnapping did not enter into discourse. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> yes, yes. Right? It did not enter into kind of like the symbolic order represented by the quest chain. And therefore, <laughs> she never existed at all basically. Right? She's gone, erased from erased from existence. Yeah. So, bummer for Tandy, but uh good for me, I guess. Yeah. Now, Shady Sands isn't going to be totally hostile to you, I guess. Yeah, um, and it'll be interesting, you know, because obvious, 
you have to complete every major quest in a certain way to create like the canonical conditions for Fallout 2. So I imagine neither of us will create the canonical conditions. But at the end of this, because I do remember quite a bit of this uh, as, as we're playing it. I remember more and more of this game. I will uh, read in the final Fallout episode, I will read the canonical endings for this game. Okay. Um, because I have already, already at this very early point, <laughs> widely diverged from, from the Fallout uh, 1 experience. You have, you have severed the thread of fate. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, this is it. And we actually don't really have a quest right now. Yeah, no, I was just thinking, like, so I guess we're going to Junktown next, but not because anyone has told us to, but just because we know it's a place that exists that we haven't been to yet. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll go to Junktown and we'll do some kind of questy stuff there. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, to, to some degree, it's like, oh, this is some like '90s ass design. But on the other hand, I kind of like that, where it's just like, yeah, you, you in your head, you only have like three locations that anyone mm-hmm. has talked about. You have exhausted two of those, so you, you can go to the hub or you can go to Junktown. You know, your choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so next episode, we're gonna go to Junktown. Uh, what are what are your just like blanket feelings on the game so far, Michael? Um, this particular episode, even though um, a lot of us talking about like what we what we experienced during this game was a lot of like weird like just being flabbergasted by things or being like this is this was like slightly more boring than I would have liked it to be. Nevertheless, um, this was kind of the point uh, playing through through this segment where I kind of started seeing the the game come together in 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 a way does that make sense yeah i'm i'm looking forward to what's going to happen next like i'm not you know expecting it to to be like huge and wild and open and systemic but i feel like the game is sort of finding its uh voice a little bit more maybe that's me learning to read the game but i think even something like seth uh sort of half like just in this offhand way like mentioning like my girl when he's referring to tandy like suddenly the npcs are being written with um a little more character than they were before Mm -hmm. uh and i don't know like you know i i know how games are produced right it's not a linear process so i don't think it's going to be something as simple as like as you play suddenly the 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 writers figured out how to write npcs with backstories um but i think as we go forward we're I'm, I'm probably going to start seeing a lot more of the things that people latch on to uh, when they think about Fallout in the future and that get brought forward in, in later entries in this series. Yeah, certainly. Uh, certainly, I think, like, the things that stick out in my mind about this game, they're all in beyond this point in the game. Mm-hmm. You know, big things I think about is, like, oh, that's that's what happened in Fallout 1. None of it has, has occurred so far. So I think that'll be really good. And I think some of, like the actual NPCs that just have character, just mm-hmm. period, show up more. Although you will get infinitely more of that than I will get. I mean, it is a, <laughs> it is just like a raw fact that I do not get access, by having a low intelligence character, I don't get access to like 90% of dialogue options, um, which A, shows some like inherent ideology around the notion mm-hmm. of intelligence, which is, you know, interesting. Um, but, but like Fallout 2 fixes this by having, uh, low care, low intelligence dialogue options. I, I don't know if you know anything about this, but like I, having, no, I'm no. aware. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so those are really cool. And I, you know, I imagine I'm playing, um, I will play Tonks, great, 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 great grandson <laughs> in <laughs> Fallout 2. So I look forward to, to doing that, to at least filling out the experience, but um michael you have anything to plug um i do not no okay i don't have anything to plug either uh where can they find you on the internet you can find me on twitter at sign warren is dead you can follow me at c Kunzelman. you can follow at range touch to follow the wide range of range touch products including sword coast coast to coast our actual play podcast where i dm uh Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition adventure and Michael and my show Game Study Study Buddies where we read academic books about game studies and talk about them for like three hours. Um, It's real good. (laughs) People like it. I got some nice messages the other day of people discovering it just now. So um, yeah, we had a like we had a little crop of like people discovering it. Yeah, it's good. I think every episode, you know, uh, hopefully every episode uh, that happens. So 
Uh, the numbers seem to suggest that that is happening. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> um but but yeah so thanks everyone for listening um you can of course join our discord you can also find stuff uh you, you're watching this on youtube uh on youtube.com slash rage touch there might be a podcast feed i'm not quite sure at this point um we are recording several of these way before you're hearing them just to kind of be ahead of the ball um but uh but yeah we will see you on the next episode where we go to junk town so until next time uh Please remember to put away your weapons before talking to us. There you go. That's our sign off. That's that's our that's the catchphrase. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>